Okay, so welcome to the last video for Unit 7 over double replacement reactions. So the first thing that I'm going to go over is what exactly is a double replacement reaction. A double replacement reaction is when you have two different compounds and two ions are going to switch places in those compounds. So for example, uh, we have AX plus BY and A and B are basically just going to swap places. And when this happens, you form AY plus BX. So uh, the reason that this happens is that you're going to form a solid product. And this has a special name that you actually need to know, and it's called a precipitate. A precipitate is a solid that forms after you've mixed two solutions. So I want you to notice that the first two compounds, the reactants, are both aqueous, which means those are solutions. These are compounds that are dissolved in water. You do mix up these two solutions, and when you do this, the ions will switch places and form a precipitate, and then what's left over is just a, another solution. And so this has a special name known as a precipitation reaction. You do need to know this by name, and you also need to be able to recognize this. Uh, so let's talk about how you know if a precipitate is formed. So the way that you're going to know if a precipitate is formed is you're going to be using what is called the solubility rules. This is found on the back of your reactions guide that we created in class. And it's just a series of rules that you need to use when you're looking at these reactions. So I want you to notice there are two different sections. The top section says that these are soluble compounds and the bottom says insoluble compounds. So soluble means that it is aqueous. It can actually dissolve in water. So you're not gonna be able to see it with your eye. Insoluble is the exact opposite. Insoluble means it's not gonna be able to dissolve in water and it's gonna be able to be seen by you because it is going to be a solid. And so how you know if something is soluble or insoluble all depends on the anion, the negatively charged thing in the compound. You have to look at what anion is in that compound, find it in this column here, and see where it falls. Now I want you to also notice that some anions, for example chlorine, is soluble with some exceptions. If chlorine is bonded to silver, lead, or mercury, it is going to be insoluble. So the exceptions are the exact opposite of what you think. So if chlorine is bonded to one of those, you're not going to write that it's aqueous for, and write AQ. You're going to write an S because it's one of the exceptions. Same goes for, say, if you have a compound that has phosphate. If phosphate is bonded to any of the exceptions listed, for example, ammonium, then it's not going to be insoluble, it's going to be soluble. And I just want to remind you guys that an alkali metal, those are the metals that are found in group one on your periodic table. So for example, potassium or sodium. So we're going to do a couple examples now. Okay, so now we're going to predict the products of a double replacement reaction. I recognize that this is a double replacement reaction because it contains two aqueous compounds mixed together, two ionic aqueous compounds. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, assume that this is going to react and produce a precipitate. So in order for that to happen, the two metals are going to have to switch places. Now I drew a visual just so you can see what's actually happening on, on an atomic level. When you are putting something in a solution, when it's aqueous, that means it's going to break up into its ions. So potassium iodide is going to break up into potassium and iodine uh, ions. And then lead nitrate is also going to break up. So these ions are just floating around in a solution. And what's going to happen is this lead and nitrate are going to be attracted to one another due to the positive and negative charge. Same thing for the potassium and the ions uh, and iodides. They're going to be attracted to one another. So we're going to assume that these are going to produce new compounds. So you're going to write this out in the a good way to do this is to go ahead and figure out the charges of the compounds before you start switching them. So potassium is in group number one, so it's got a plus one. This lead, I can see, has a positive two charge because there's a two next to the nitrate. 
Iodine is in group 17 and has a negative one, and nitrate always has a negative one. So I did that just so it can help me figure out what their charges are going to be when I write the products. So potassium is going to bond with nitrate, and a plus one and a negative one do not need to be brought down, so that just stays KNO3. And then my other product is going to be lead and iodine. Lead has a plus two, iodine with a negative one. So we're gonna go ahead and bring that two down. Okay, so these are the two products that I could be forming. So now the question is, is did I form a precipitate? Which one of these, if any of these, is a solid? So in order to do that, I'm gonna to have to go look at my solubility rules. Okay, so here are our two possible products from that reaction. So uh, remember when we're looking at our solubility rules, it all depends on the anion in the compound. So we're gonna look and identify the two anions. The first one has NO3, which is nitrate. So I'm gonna find nitrate on my chart and I see that it's under the soluble compounds. Remember, those are the aqueous ones. And if you look, nitrate, is always going to be aqueous because there are no exceptions for it. So potassium nitrate is going to stay in solution. Those ions are just gonna remain floating around in the solution. For iodine, we find that that is also under the, or the soluble compound. So it should be aqueous, but if you notice, look over at the exceptions. Lead is actually one of the exceptions. So this is not going to be aqueous. We want it to be, but it's not going to be. It's one of the exceptions, and it's actually going to be insoluble or a solid. So this is our precipitate for the reaction. So this is actually going to be a reaction that is going to complete. And so let's go back to our reaction. Okay, so reviewing back over, the potassium nitrate was soluble, so it's aqueous and the lead iodide was our precipitate, so it's gonna be a solid. So if a reaction goes to completion, AKA you have made a precipitate, then you need to go back and make sure that this is balanced, your favorite thing to do. So if you notice, uh, our nitrates are not balanced. I have two on the reactant side, but only one on the product side, so I'm gonna add a two there. And I also noticed that my iodines are not balanced, so I'm going to add a 2 on the reactant side. And I ended up adding two potassiums on both sides, so that's okay. So that is a completed double replacement, a.k.a. precipitation reaction. Okay, so our next example is potassium nitrate solution is added to a magnesium sulfate solution. So again, I drew a visual for you guys so you can get an idea of how the ions are separating in the solution and they're floating around. And when this happens, the positives and the negatives are gonna be attracted to one another. So we could potentially make a new uh, product that could be a solid. So again, switch your metals and your anions. So potassium is going to bond with sulfate and Magnesium is going to bond with nitrate. And there's something I forgot to do, and that was figure out the charges. And so we're going to go back through. Potassium's in group one, plus one. Nitrate's always a negative one. Magnesium is in group number two, so it's a plus two. And sulfate, I should have memorized as a negative two. So I did that so it can help me uh, crisscross the charges on the product side. So I'm gonna have to bring down this negative two from sulfate, so it should be K2SO4. And then for magnesium nitrate, magnesium's a plus two, nitrate's a negative one, so you're gonna have to bring down that two to make MgNO32. So again, the question is, are either one of these a solid? Do I have a solid here or do I have a solid here? So we're gonna have to look at our solubility rules again. All right, so here are our two products. We have potassium sulfate and magnesium nitrate. And remember, it all depends on the anion. That determines whether it's gonna be soluble or insoluble. So our first one has sulfate as its anion. And I see that it's gonna be soluble unless it's bonded to 
SR, BA, PB, or HG, which is not the metal that it's bonded to. So this is going to be soluble. So I'm going to write AQ with that. And then the next one is nitrate. And remember, remember from the last problem, nitrate has no exceptions. It's always going to be soluble. So this is also aqueous. So both of these are aqueous, and that's going to create a different situation. So let's go back to our reaction. So we have two aqueous products. So both of them are AQ and AQ. So that essentially means if they are aqueous, then the ions are still floating around in the solution, and this situation is the exact same as how it started. So nothing changed. So we are just going to mark that out, and these are going to be your favorite because you just get to write NR for no reaction. So we don't have to go back and balance it because there's nothing to balance out. Okay, for this video, I do want you to write a summary because this is a pretty uh, difficult concept. So I want you to go over uh, again what a double replacement reaction is. Make sure you talk about exactly what a precipitation reaction means. And then discuss how we use those solubility rules. Remember, it all depends on the anion. And then talk about how in some situations you can have a complete reaction and in some situations you can have no reaction.